Have you ever gone to hang a shelf or put up a photo and found yourself concerned that you're going to hit a cable or maybe you've been one of the unlucky people out there who have drilled straight through an electrical cable. Well today I'm going to take that mystery away because we're going to talk a little bit about cable zones and where you're likely to find cables running within a wall. So if you watch this video to the end you should never drill through a cable again. So before we move on to ways to detect cables in walls I'm going to cover prescribed cable zones. That is something that electricians out there will all know about but nobody ever trains the DIYer or the carpenter or the plumber. So what I want to do is make a really simple video that will help you guys so that you never hit a cable again. So to make it really simple, within the regulations that electricians will follow, there is something called prescribed cable zones. And they are areas within the wall where electricians can install their cables. So as a DIY you need to treat these cable zones as danger areas. And they are areas where you should expect cables to be. So let's start with the easy ones. Now the first zone where you should always suspect cables to be is within 150 millimeters from the top of the wall. So that's discounting any coving going right from where the ceiling would meet the top of that wall you got 150 mil, so say there. We'll mark that with a piece of tape. I don't know if the tape's dead level, by the way, but that is just to illustrate to you that that area there you should not be drilling into because that is within a prescribed zone. So the next easiest one to think of is where there are two adjoining walls. So, for example, in this corner here, there's an adjoining wall there. There's an angle formed by two adjoining walls. Now again, just like before, 150 mil from the corner where those walls meet, that's a cable zone. So again, it's a little bit dodgy drilling into that zone there. So we'll mark that off as well. Now the ones that are more likely to catch you out are the accessories on a wall. So that could be a socket, like this one in the bottom corner down here, or a switch like this one over here. So you would find that commonly you'll have a cable running above a switch like this one here. So often what you'll find is the cable will drop down from the loft space above, it will be chased in the wall here and it will come into the top of the knockout box and that space there above the switch would be a cable zone. And that zone there runs all the way from the bottom of the switch to the floor and all the way from the top of the switch to the top of the wall. But the safe zone also runs horizontal from that switch. Essentially you've got four zones here. Now whilst it may seem unlikely that a cable might go that way, they are still zones. So we'll mark that out now so that you can see where those zones are on the wall. And you can see actually that the space you can start safely drilling into becomes less and less when we start to mark some of these out. So I've put my level horizontally from the switch now to mark out that zone and the eagle-eyed of you will have noticed that there are plugs within the zone. But I suppose it could be argued that maybe the person that put these in the wall here used a tool that I will show you once I've shown you the zones and maybe they knew that there was no cables in the wall. But we'll check it out. For all we know, they could have just missed the cables. Let me jump out of the way. If we now stand back, you can see actually there's quite a large area, especially up that corner there, where we don't want to be sticking a drill bit through into the wall. So put in a very simple way, anywhere where there's an accessory on the wall, a switch or a socket, anything horizontal or vertical from the switch or socket is dangerous for you to drill into. And by taking this as a general guide and something to live by when you're drilling into walls, it'll keep the cables intact and it will keep you safe. This video is not over yet. What about if somebody chose to ignore the regulations, didn't know the regulations, or the property is a lot older and the regulations weren't quite up to the standard that they are today? Well, we could use one of these. It is a multi-detector and it will detect cables. But before I show you how to use one of these, do me a favour, drop me a comment down below and let me know what else you want to see coming to the channel and hit the like button because that helps the video reach more people on YouTube and hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on all the videos that I've got to come going forward because I've got some really exciting projects to come. So you can get lots of different multi detectors, you can get cheap ones, you can get expensive ones. Um, loads of people use these. I've had this one seven years and whilst it's not foolproof, none of these are, it has never let me down. So there'll be a link down below in the description if you want to grab one. So first of all, quite interestingly, somebody's drilled into the prescribed zone here. 
Maybe they had one of these detectors. So let's check and see. We've got the detector set to electricity. And if we just run that across there, there's nothing in the zone there. So this person, maybe they had a detector and they knew there was nothing within that cable zone. Let's move across to somewhere where there is electricity so I can show you where not to drill. So if we look at the zone above the light switch here, which we've got marked out with tape, if we move the detector across that zone into the zone there, and you can see it's beeping and flashing red, going a little bit crazy at me. And it's basically saying there is a cable detected within the wall here. So these are really handy and no matter whether you're a DIYer, a carpenter, a plumber, or even an electrician, you should really have one in your tool bag. One thing you do need to know about these is they are not in any way foolproof. So they can be stumped in a couple of scenarios. Uh, the first one being vapor resistant plasterboard. That plasterboard has a foil back on it. It sets these things off a tree and also metal stud work. It plays havoc with these and it leaves them next to useless in some situations. So do not abandon the methods that I've shown you here and other common sense. So if unfortunately you have gone and hit a cable, I do have a video on the channel that can get you out of that muddle and that'll pop up on the screen here and if you want to see all this kind of stuff done for real then hit this video because that'll take you over to my renovation series i hope you found the video helpful i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you guys on the next one